761 here today and I just bought this Rosemount uh, out on eBay, Rosemount pressure transmitter and it's supposed to be a smart heart communication transmitter and um, so uh, pressure transmitter is supposed to cover from 0 to 100 PSI so I've hooked my leads onto it now I want to know how to hook them up to my ADT 761 so I'm going to go into setup I've got a button here that says setup and I'm going to go down to help okay and then I'm going to try to figure out how to hook this up so down here it's, is a heart pressure transmitter Okay, went a little too far. Okay, a heart pressure transmitter. So that tells me that I'm supposed to put my black lead into the top one here and my uh, red lead, my hot lead, into the bottom one here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug those in. And I'll escape out of here now. And it looks like we are indeed reading. So we're at uh, basically at zero. I'm going to go ahead and vent my vent my unit so that it goes down to zero it will turn green when it's stable and uh, so I'm reading uh, my pressure here my source for my calibrator and I'm reading my Rosemount transmitter heart transmitter up here and it doesn't look like that's uh, I'll try venting one more time and see if that stabilizes at zero there we go alright so we're at zero and it looks like we're very close to four. So we're ready to go ahead and, and do a calibration on this transmitter. So let's go into task and then we'll scroll, scroll, scroll over and choose pressure transmitter. I'll hit enter and we can choose from a task that we've already set up. This is for a 0 to 160 PSI so 4 to 20 milliamp output that would not work. This is for a 0 to 40 kilopascal out, uh, range so that would not work so let's do a new task so I'll hit enter there and uh, let's let's name it uh, let's delete that task number six let's make it task number one okay and once I've done that how many cycles do we want to do well let's just do one let's do a range of zero to 100 and then let's change from kilopascals to PSI so I've changed the PSI. Accuracy. We can choose our accuracies or we can enter a custom accuracy. I'm not sure what the accuracy on this uh, gauge is. I'm going to say 0.1%. It's probably not that good. But let's say 0.1 to see if we can calip that tight. Let's do three points. And if we want to see the point list that it chose or if we want to put in our own point list, we can. So I can change those here. It just shows a zero span and a midpoint, so 0, 50, and 100 PSI. I can scroll through and change any of those that I want, but I'm just going to leave it for now. Okay, so I'm going to hit save there. And uh, are we going to do uh, hard communication, 4 to 12 milli milliamps, 0 to 10 volts? There's all these different choices of here of what we want to, how we want to do this cal, but I'm going to choose hard communication. And then I can do a linear output or a square root output. I'm going to choose a linear output, okay? And then we're going to save that. It says save and exit. I'll hit enter for yes. Okay, so it's ready to go. Uh, we've got a 0 to 100 PSI, 0.1% accuracy. And I'm going to go ahead and hit run. It wants to know the date. It wants to know the current temperature and the current humidity in my lab. That's so that we can put that on the calibration certificate later. So I'm going to hit enter. I could have changed this if I wanted. It says, do you want to start pulling for a heart device? I'll say enter or yes. Use the internal 24 volt loop power to power it. Since I don't have it in place, I've pulled it from whatever it was being used in. I'm going to say yes. I want to use the internal 24 volt loop power of the calibrator. So it's going out looking for the unit now. It looks like it's found it and it's reading it. And it came back and said, we've got a Rosemount 3051C. Um, it's got a tag number, 
it's reading its pressure right now and uh, it's telling me what its low end value is and its high end value. So um, I'm going to go ahead and select that unit. Okay. Now it's going to ask me uh, what heart press process I want to use. I'm going to do a loop calibration. So um, it wants to know if I want to manually have it enter the values or if it wants to go in auto. So I'm just going to hit auto. I want to run this in auto. It wants to know how long I want to wait after it has stabilized to take a reading. So I'll say let's wait for three seconds. Then it also wants to wait, say, how long after it gets to the top and is done taking its readings, do I want to wait before it comes back down and checks the hysteresis of the transmitter. So I'll wait, tell it to wait at the top for 10 seconds. Hit enter. All right, it is ready to go, so it's waiting for it to stabilize. Once it turns green here, that means it's stabilized. Now it'll wait three seconds. It's going to take its first reading. And now it's going to go to its midpoint, 50 PSI. And it will take that reading. All right, it's stable. I'm going to wait three seconds, take the reading, go to the next point. Now, after it takes this point, then it's going to wait 10 seconds, take a reading again, and head back down. Okay, so we're at 100 psi. And it's stable, and so it's going to take a reading now. And it's waiting 10 seconds to take another reading on the descent. All right, it take, took its descending reading. Now it's going to head back down. I'm going to see if I can zoom in a little bit on this so you can see it better. Okay, it said it is done. So I hit any key to, to uh, go on. And then if I hit the next button here, it gives me my data. So we passed at zero PSI, but we failed at the midpoint because it's in red. You probably can't see that because it's very small. And then we failed at the 100 PSI at the high point as well. And so let's do our choose heart service here. And let's do a PV trim. I want to do, let's do um, just the high point because the low value was just fine. So it says both, but I'm going to choose only the upper value. And then let's go to 100 PSI and hit enter and next. Okay, so it's going to run it up to 100 PSI. It's running it to 100 PSI here, and it's going to see what the milliamp output is, and it's 20.162, and so it's going to make an adjustment when I hit when I hit stop this now. So it's it's green, so I know it's ready to go. So I'm going to hit stop. It says, "Are you sure you wish to update calibration data?" I'm going to hit yes. So it is retrimming that now. Now let's. Now let's escape out of there. Let's restart the test. It says you'll all new results will erase previous results. Restart now. Yes. Wants to know the date and time again. Humidity. Loop again. And auto. Three seconds and ten seconds again. And away it goes. Now let's see with our adjustment if we brought it within spec. I'm going to try to get this even closer. Maybe you can see it better. Oh.
right, we're doing our second point. That looks very close. Nineteen point nine. That's also very close. I think we're going to pass this time. Okay, it's waiting for its ten seconds to do the descending readings. Now it's done that. It's on its way. This is pretty nice. I'm not having to do anything but watch, basically. Okay, it's taking its final point. It says it's done. Let's hit enter. Next. And sure enough, we did pass. It did not highlight any of these in red this time. So just so I, I'm, I'm guessing you can't see this. Set point is 0, 50, and 100 PSI. Expected milliamp output, 4 milliamps, 12 milliamps, 20 milliamps. Uh, loop milliamps actually read on the ascending 3.9986, 11.9984, 19.9981. On the descending 3.9986, so it exactly matched. Uh, descending 11.9985, it was a difference of 0 0.0001. Descending of 19.9978, a difference of 0 0.0007, or sorry, 3. Indicator error. 0 0.0014, 0 0.0016, and 0 0.0022. If I hit the next page, it gives me my indicator error tolerance of 0 0.016 and max of 0 0.0022. So it was within spec. Hysteresis error of 0 0.016 is the tolerance, and we were at 0 0.0003, so well within tolerance there. Now, if I wanted to hook up my computer to the to the uh, RS-232, I would get out my RS-232 to USB cable. I would download that task to my computer and save the data in an Excel spreadsheet. And uh, I could also upload a new task if I wanted to to start a different uh, different uh, calibration, or I can save uh, several tasks on here if I prefer to do it just on here. And uh, that's pretty much it. Next page and shows us our data again. We can escape out of there and uh, start a new test or, or just finish for the day. That's it.